Design Challenges Faced in Developing Embedded Product In this video, we are going to list out some of the challenges faced during the design. In addition to meeting the desired functionality of an embedded system, embedded system designer must optimize on the following design matrix. Non-recurring engineering cost NRE Money invested in R&D and developing first functional and tested prototype. Unit cost, cost of producing one unit. Electrical power, performance, system throughput, computational power, response time. Functional correctness, dependability, fault tolerance, reliability, maintainability, availability. Physical size and weight, time to prototype, time to market, safety, it should not cause harm to others, maintenance, ease of use. These matrix compete among themselves. Increasing one may affect other. Hence, optimization of these matrix is a challenge for an embedded system design. These are some of the embedded system applications found in our daily life like cell phones, digital cameras, car music system, robotics like IBO and Azimo, iPod, navigation systems, setup box, point of sale, water flow meter. Design requirements Except few common features, rest of the embedded hardware is usually unique and varies from application to application. Each system must meet a completely different set of requirements. Common critical features and design requirements of an embedded hardware include processing power. Selection of the processor is based on the amount of processing power to get the job done and also on the basis of register width required. Throughput. The system may need to handle a lot of data in a short period of time. Response The system has to react to events quickly. Memory Hardware designer must make his best estimation of the memory requirement and must make provision for expansion. Power consumption Systems generally work on battery and design of both software and hardware must take care of power saving techniques. Number of units. The number of units expected to be produced and sold will dictate the trade off between production cost and development cost. Expected lifetime. Design decisions like selection of components to system development cost will depend on how long the system is expected to run. Program installation. Installation of the software onto the embedded system needs special tools, testability and debugability. Setting up test conditions and equipment will be difficult and finding out what is wrong with the software will become a difficult task without a keyboard and the usual display screen. Reliability is critical if it is a space shuttle or a car, but in case of a toy, it doesn't always have to work right. Power management. Amount of energy available in the batteries is not only finite but also low, which limits the lifetime of the systems. Low power desktop CPUs are not really suitable for embedded application. For example, as it takes 3 to 7 watts low power Pentium for laptops. The PDA takes less than 1 watt, but for many embedded systems, it takes less than 1 milliwatts as they need to run for 30 days. To five years on a battery. Example, pacemakers. As per Moore's law, 
number of transistors in integrated circuit has doubled approximately every two years so the processing power but battery capacity doubles only every 10 years we need a more efficient way to enable longer life by designing hardware using ultra low power fast wake up when needed low cost perpetual power generation that is systems to be completely battery independent and self-sustaining by using ambient power source like light vibration body heat and so on as replacement for batteries that is conversion of ambient energy into usable electrical energy advantage of low power design lower heat dissipation eliminates heat sinks lower cost of system no cooling arrangement needed to be done smaller size battery backup more feasible overall reduced cost greater functionality and high performance portable medical monitoring stethoscope blood pressure body temperature glucose measurement heart rate measuring devices digital multimeter digital flow meter gadgets designed to help stay fit healthy and wise fitness tracker variable device health belt features with built-in gps to display position and routing works with app on the iphone via bluetooth heart rate sensor is worn around the chest to measure heart rate calories burned and average heart rate cycle cadence monitoring monitors your pedaling cadence and speed as you ride with easy to install wireless sensor pedometer shoe a pedometer is a device that calculates the distance a person has walked or run oral hygiene gadget electronic rechargeable toothbrush the core component of portable low power devices include low power mcu providing the required battery power management analog to digital interface io for display or touch screen interfacing non volatile low power memory programming for signal processing and communications ambient energy source need a reliable power supply beyond the limitation posed by batteries development of devices solution capable of harvesting energy from the user's environment or the user's body there is abundant energy in our environment examples of energy sources are light vibration body heat chemical rf the trick is to convert that ambient energy into usable electrical energy to power a microcontroller. Energy harvesting is the process by which energy is captured and stored. Energy harvesting is nothing new. Solar power calculator, road signs, decorative lamps that are popping up in gardens, the toll tag type or pay phone tag type, use RFIDs which actually run off harvested power by observing a pulse of energy from the reader use that energy store that energy and use it to retransmit the identity of the reader block diagram of wsn which consists of five major components the energy harvester energy storage element and power management circuitry, sensor, ultra low power microcontroller and low power trans receiver. The energy storage element is required in order to accumulate the energy for usage when the energy harvester is not harvesting energy. For example, a solar panel system during the night. The energy storage element must be rechargeable. The power management is critical as it interfaces to the harvester, charges 
the storage element and provides power to the system. Sensor data is recorded and processed by the microcontroller. Finally, the data is transmitted to a central host by the trans receiver. Following are the applications of energy harvesting. WSN are a network of sensors that communicate wirelessly and are self-powered. An example of a WSN is a collection of sensors that monitor a bridge structural integrity. The network can be distributed over a large area covering several square kilometers. The infrastructure to provide wired communication with the sensors and power distribution would be costly and impractical. However, using energy harvesters allow each sensor node to be self-powered. Solar panels could harvest energy from the sunlight, whereas a vibration-based harvester could harvest energy from the vibration of the bridge created by the moving vehicle. Think of Kolkata flyover, the recent disaster where 23 people lost their lives. If you would have used a set of strain gauge, paint condition monitors, vibration monitors, and attached it to the flyover, you could have wirelessly compared this data to observe the health and life of the structure. Hospitals can monitor your progress, vital statistics, vital signs using sensors that could adhere to your skin, could run off your body heat, measure the types of data that doctors are looking. For example, temperature, body pressure, heart rate, blood oxygen level and transmit those wirelessly to central station or EICU, Electronic Intensive Care Unit. Smoke Detector Smoke detector is meant to detect particles in the air and alert the sleeper or the occupants of the house to a problem, indicating if there is a smoke, there must be a fire. People die even having smoke detectors installed in their living area because the smoke detectors do not sound and the reason is they have lost power. Solar panels are a suitable source of energy to power a smoke detector. Body Area Network is a network that includes a collection of variable devices. The technology leverages wireless communications protocol that allow for low power sensor to communicate with one another and transmit data to a local and remote places like hospitals. Continuous monitoring and logging vital parameters of patients suffering from chronic diseases such as diabetes, asthma, heart attacks. Patient can alert the hospital even before they have heart attack or stroke. Human body continuously radiates heat. Devices in direct contact to the human body can harvest this energy by means of the thermoelectric generators TEG. Energy harvesting trade-off, advantage and disadvantage are Advantages, mobile, no power wires, easier installation, lower maintenance, environmentally friendly. Disadvantages, dependent on availability of harvestable energy source, strict power budget, upfront cost may be higher, less mature technology.